You're listening to Wake Up with Patty Catter, where we're overcoming trials with triumphs. Now, here's your host, Patty Catter. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing great. Today, I have a wonderful guest. Sal Habibi is on the show with me. Hi, Sal. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Thank you. A lot of people who listen to my show know that I don't BS at the beginning. So I'm going to just jump right in and have you tell my listeners who you are and what you're about. Yes. My name is Sal Habibi. I'm in now an entrepreneur in several different businesses. So I have my own online Amazon store that I run. I also teach people how to start businesses. Um, I'm also now writing my first book and getting into, um, you know, giving back to the community. Um, and yeah, just trying to expand my network and provide value. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. So where did you come from? Where did you grow up? Let's start there. Yes, so I was born in the Bay Area, in the San Francisco Bay Area. That's where I was born and raised um, most of my life up until I would say about 25 years old. All right. And tell me, when you were a kid, what did you think you were going to do when you grew up? Because I, I know this is probably like, why are you asking me this? Like, let's get to the juicy stuff. But uh, a lot of our listeners, we have all sorts from... Um, you know, kids who were raised in foster care, kids who were raised in strict religious homes or whatnot. So we're kind of curious, what background did you have? Yeah, it's funny when I was a kid. So my, my dad, um, not to extend too much of the, what he was doing, but he had his own business. So he would do like what Gary V talks about all the time, go to garage sales, buy things and resell them. My dad actually did that for a living and that's still what he does, but now it's at a different scale. He has warehouses and things like that. But growing up when I was like six, seven years old, I was in the hustle automatically because I would go with him to these garage sales. We would buy things. We would sell them. And I realized hmm, this, the whole point of this is to make money. So at a very early age, I started thinking, how could I make the most amount of money? What could I get into? So I didn't think about, oh, I want to be an astronaut or I want to be a fireman. I was always thinking and asking like my older cousins, hey, what do you do? How much do you make? Like everyone, I would ask everybody how much they made. And I still had no idea what I wanted to do, but I was always curious and thinking, you know, what can I do to make a lot of money? So I was always in that type of mindset. And I think I always knew I wanted to start a business, even when I was younger. Mm -hmm. What about when you were a teenager? Um, when I was a teenager, I actually got into competitive bodybuilding and I wanted to become an IFBB pro, which is actually a goal by this year. I decided to come back to that and accomplish that goal. But that's what I wanted to do during my teen years, all the way till I was like 22. Actually, I competed in bodybuilding and it was my goal to become a pro. It didn't happen, but that's what I wanted. Wow. I have had a couple of those on my show. I'm going to have to go back and remember which ones, but um Oh my gosh, that's really cool. And so, I mean, it kind of shows that right from the beginning, you know, when you're a kid, you have kind of a strong mindset because I know I, I actually was raised going to garage sales too. My grandpa was major into thrift shopping, like everything thrift shops. Um, I, but, you know, you kind of get that mindset when you're little of just like what's next and what kind of treasures can you find next? Um, and then as a teenager, you know, we all go through these these crazy times, crazy stories. Um, so tell me about how did you get interested in Amazon? Because that was before COVID when everybody was super like, you know, starting to get into Amazon a little bit, but then COVID hit and like, it was super crazy and it blew up. So I want to kind of hear that story. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason I ever got into Amazon FBA is because I saw I saw a guy that went to my gym that was a couple years older than me and he had a Lamborghini and I was in my early twenties and he had a Lamborghini in the Bay area, which you almost never see. And he was going to my gym working out and he also had a clothing brand. And that was my mindset always was, I want to know what people do to get rich. So I was so curious, like what the heck does this guy do? And I reached out to him on Instagram and I ended up following him, not actually talking to him because he didn't reply right away. But I realized, okay, he does Amazon FBA. And that's what sparked my interest. I was like, this guy's almost my age and he has a Lambo. I want to do whatever he does. And then I, I you know, got interested in it. 
Yeah. One of my friends, uh, we'll talk off air, but he, he does Amazon and he has a Lambo. So I thought you were talking about him, but he lives here in Florida. So unless he lived oh, over okay. there first, I'm not sure, but yeah, Maybe, I, might know him. I bet you do. I'll, well, yeah, I'll bet you do. Um, we're supposed to get together sometime this week, actually. So cool. Um, now, so when you're starting to get into Amazon, I mean, you must have some difficulties trying to figure it out at first, or did it just come naturally to you? No, it was it was a pretty crazy story of me getting started. Um, yeah, I can share a little bit of, you know, where I was mentally and financially and how I actually approached starting Amazon FBA. So before I got into it, um, during my college years, let's say, you know, 19, 20, 21, during those years, I was actually, you know, your your ideal bad kid. I was getting bad grades in college. Um, I didn't like going to college. And I also got into drugs a little bit. So not a little bit, actually, a lot. So I was, you know, I was deep into that whole world of going out and partying, doing drugs. And my environment was completely surrounded by that. Like I had no friends that were entrepreneurs. Um, I didn't know anyone outside of my little environment where we did drugs and we partied and, you know, we we just acted kind of silly, wasted our our early 20s doing nothing really useful. So I was in that environment. And while I was there, I did actually try to start my own businesses. So I did try drop shipping. I did try to make a brand and put it on Amazon. But all these things that I kept trying, affiliate marketing, whatever you name it, I probably have tried like 10 different online incomes. And I failed at all of them. And the reason why I didn't understand it back then, but it's because I was in that environment and I thought I could still be a successful entrepreneur while waking up and getting high, going out and you know going to the club, but at the same time telling everybody, oh yeah, I'm going to start a brand online. And it didn't work. And it wasn't until my life started going really downhill and I was embarrassed to even go to my mom and dad's house. And one day when they invited me over for a family party, I was pretty high and I realized if I go, everyone will realize that... I just took drugs and I'm going to embarrass my parents. And I pretty much just sat in my car feeling complete embarrassment. Like I can't even go to my parents' house tonight because of who I've become because I'm so high on drugs. So I decided that day that something has to change because I don't want to completely push away from my family. I had already ruined other relationships and, you know, friendships and things like that. So I told myself that day, I'm, I'm going to quit somehow completely this life that I have with drugs and these friends and um, somehow break free from this. So that's when around that time is actually when this guy that had the Lambo, he posted on Instagram that I'm taking six new people to teach and I'm going to teach you everything, not just Amazon. I'm going to teach you about better habits and life and everything I know that has helped me become an entrepreneur. I'm going to teach you um, book a call. So I booked a call and I decided that day, I know it's going to sound crazy, but I decided that day that I'm going to cold turkey quit everything. And I did that day. I got rid of everything, like everything I had in my apartment. I got rid of it. I completely quit. I did not do drugs after that point when I started by, you know, my little wake up journey of I'm going to be covered you bad. Mm-hmm. So that's amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. It always takes something to really like jolt a person from either doing the drugs or doing whatever it is that's holding them back from their whatever highest calling or whatever you want to call it. So, um, so you just started this journey and it, I mean, tell me, it seems like you're pretty successful at this, right? Yeah. Now I've I've made um, millions of, I would say about $4 million in sales on Amazon. Um, I also teach Amazon. So that's another source of income. And then also affiliate marketing is something that we do. So um, in in all, I would say we're doing about six figures per month in profit um, for all my businesses combined. So from, you know, that kid doing drugs in his apartment to now, uh, I'm pretty, pretty happy with what what I've accomplished. Mm -hmm. And that's an amazing story because I do have a lot of um, parents or young adults who are listening and either the parents are saying like, I don't know if my kid's ever going to do anything with themselves. And I'm like, yeah, they can still do something with themselves. Right. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That's that's tough. That's something that I'm actually writing my book and I'm going to, the target audience for my book will be, um, you know, teenagers and 
anyone that is in their 20s that is feeling exactly how I felt, where before I reached out to this mentor, I knew nothing about personal development. I knew nothing about habits. I knew nothing about spirituality, like literally nothing. I was just in this, you know, the norm in America now of go to college and just get that degree. And there was nothing else surrounding that. Like, what about setting goals? What about personal development? What about waking up and, you know, meditating or at least envisioning your future and having a five-year plan? And none of those things we were taught. So I was just sucked into this, just go to school to get that paper. And once I got my mentor, he actually taught me all those things. And now that I've left the Bay Area, it's it's funny looking back and seeing, wow, if all my friends and you know everybody else that I grew up with, if they also got exposed to the things that my mentor taught me, their lives would also be completely changed. But they're not only not exposed to it, it you know, it's just not even out there for them to to find. They have to, you know, sit down and YouTube it and research it, and people aren't going to do that. So that's why I'm writing this book to explain um, to you know anybody in their 20s that you're not stuck. You're not. It's not the end of the world because you didn't get a college degree or maybe you're addicted to drugs. Maybe you got kicked out from your job, whatever it may be. It's not the end of the world. There's just these things that you have to learn and goals you have to set that can break you free. Mm -hmm. That is so great because oftentimes young people, you know, you, you screw up, right? Everybody screws up and even adults, um, you screw up and I mean, you let that hold you back. Like, oh man, I can't do this. Cause I had like drugs in my record or in my past or whatever. And that's just not the case. You really can do something and you're, you're an amazing example. So, um, so tell us, do you on Amazon, do you make and sell your own product or is it the buy sell kind of thing? No, we make our own products, our own brands. So, um, the easiest way I like to explain it is take a look at what Kylie Jenner did. I do exactly what Kylie Jenner does. She took makeup that women are already buying a lot of. She didn't create lipstick. She didn't create anything. She probably didn't even like look at the formula. All she did is say, I'm Kylie Jenner. Put my name on that product that women are already buying and sell it. And she made billions of dollars. That's what we do. We find things that already sell a lot. We know they're really successful. And we just think of a way to make them look better. We put a brand name on there. We put a logo on there and we put it on Amazon. And the cool thing is, Kylie Jenner has hundreds of millions of followers. She's rich. She's famous. She has a whole team. We actually have all of that too, because Amazon has hundreds of millions of customers. Amazon is our team. They are our warehouse. They do everything for us. And you don't need a lot of money because you just start with one product. Once that starts selling, you move on to the second one. And I actually did make my own makeup line because of Kylie Jenner on Amazon. And it made me the most money I've ever made. <laughs> That's amazing. So you teach people how to do that or do you teach, do you bring people onto your team or? We teach people how, do how to do that. And um, a question we always get is why are you teaching people when it's going to create more competition? It's because there are, there are hundreds of thousands, probably millions of products on Amazon. And like I have seven, there's no way I can sell millions of products to people. There's just too many. And I don't even want to sell that many products. I want to focus on what I'm good at right now and keep selling those. It's like, you know, if Kylie Jenner didn't want to teach anybody, any of her friends, um, how to create a brand, it, she only sells her makeup line. She doesn't sell cars. Same thing with us. You know, there's car category, there's the baby category, there's a toy category. I don't sell on any of those. So why not teach people how to make a brand, put it on Amazon and do what I do. Wow. That's amazing too. So, um, did you ever freak out thinking that you were going to sell too much of a product and not be able to handle it all? Or you are confident in your, your, the way you're doing things. We did run out of stock a few times, which is one of the worst things that could happen, but the best thing also. So it actually happened to one of my members as well. So we usually start with buying, let's, let's say 500 pieces of a product. And we do that knowing that we're probably going to sell out, but we don't know how fast. But that first time, you just don't know. It's like, yeah, the market says 3000 a month gets sold, but you don't know how well yours is going to do. You don't know how creative you are and if people are going to like what you made. So we start with 500 and most of the time we do sell out in that first month. And then now we're like, okay, let's buy 2000 next time. Um, even then, you don't know if it's going to pick up a lot and you sell out too fast. Or in some cases, 
for some reason, you know, prices start lowering, you don't sell as many, and now you have some inventory left. Um, unfortunately, that happens, but most of the time you don't get stuck with it. You can just manipulate the price, throw some ads on there, and still get rid of the product. Mm-hmm. Do you teach people how to create the ads as well? Yeah, we have a full program from A through Z where we teach everything, um, how to do everything from creating your account to finding a really profitable product. No one sells anything without also getting it approved by us. So you won't kind of be on your own like, hey, is this going to work or not? You can actually send us your idea and we'll look at it and tell you, yes, that's a product I approve or no, and then complete the rest of the process. Wow, that's neat. So how many students would you say you've taught? Um, now we're in the high hundreds. Um, I would say in the last three years of teaching, uh, we're probably around a thousand students now. Wow. And these Congratulations. Are, yeah. These are people from all over the world. So we have members from France, the UK, Australia, Dubai, London, Canada, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Wow. So if somebody wants to sign up for one of your courses, where do they go? Um, the best way, honestly, for you to first at least see what this is all about, the best way is to send me a message on Instagram. My Instagram is at Sal underscore Habibi. So once you reach out to me, I would send you um, a link to actually go look at a full free training first. So you can see what it's about and see if it's for you. The last thing we want is people to like jump in and pay for something. And then they're like, wait, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. So the free training breaks it all down. It shows you exactly how it works. Um, You can even use that and try it out on your own if you want. And then if you wanted the additional help, then we're there to to guide you the whole way. Wow. So usually I ask my guests what's um, one trial you've had in your life and how did you overcome it? But you talked about your drugs. That was a major thing. Is there anything else that you can think of? Yeah, well, I was fired from every job I ever had. I got kicked out of the U.S. Air Force. I got pretty much kicked out of college. Uh, I also um, completely went into debt. I had no money. So my lowest, lowest point, I would say, is I was 25 years old, 25. I was living in my parents' living room because this is the point where I got fired from every job. I got kicked out of the Air Force and I got kicked out, dropped out of college. I would say either or would work for that instance. So all those things happened and I was 25 and I moved back to my parents' house and I no longer had a room. So I was in their living room and I did quit drugs at that point, but I was in their living room with no money. And I also totaled my car and I didn't have insurance. So I was like rock bottom. I I have nothing. And I pretty much either lost all my friends or got rid of the ones that were toxic to me. So I had no one I was talking to. I had no guy friends, nothing. I was just in their living room. Like, all right, it's a completely fresh start. What do I do now? So yeah, that, that was, I would say the the lowest point I had. Yeah. And you know what? I'm really glad that you told us that you were kicked out of the air force because I personally know as a military advocate, I know many veterans who've gotten kicked out of the military and it's devastating to a lot of them where they don't even want to leave their house anymore because people don't realize like you have to put it on your DD-214 or whatnot, but or um, your job resumes or whatever. But, um, and it, and it says on your DD-214, but the fact is a lot of people, like we had talked about earlier, a lot of people do screw up and that, especially if you're in the military and you're really young, you're still, you know, your mind's still developing even at that point. Um, but starting your own business, you can do anything you want. You can have any kind of past that you want and you can still overcome all of that crap. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, the way I looked at it was this, I was, I was 25 at that, um, you know, lowest point in my life, like rock bottom to me. Um, and for me, one of the worst things was having absolutely no money. Like I had zero money in my bank account. And it was like, there's no way I could possibly get out of this. And for for several days, of course, I did just, you know, lay there in my parents' living room. Um, They put a little sheet to like give me some privacy. So I didn't have a door, but I had like a bed sheet that hung on the wall. So I kind of had privacy. So some days I did just lay there, you know, hating my life, crying, depressed, and just thinking, what have I done? Like I completely failed at everything, including college. Like I did nothing right in life and I'm 25 now. So it did start like that. And then 
I did get into my personal development and I did start reading books. And I would say that's, if I could credit one thing that helped me the most, it would be the books that I read. And those books that I read, they're, you know, self-help books and it's, it's cliche. And, you know, people look at them like they're, they're not really that helpful. It completely changed my life because I read things that I had never heard of, like how to envision a better future, how to rewire your brain instead of me sitting there and constantly thinking about all the things I did bad, how terrible my life is. I started thinking, well, what do I want in the future? And if I could have anything in the world five years from now, how does my life look like? And I literally started envisioning my future like that. I made a vision board and I put a Ferrari on there and I put my dream apartment on there and I put $1 million. I literally printed out, you know, a sign that said 1 million and a bunch of other things that I wanted in my life. And I put them all on my vision board and then I started to meditate. So every morning I would wake up, I still was in the same situation. I was still the guy that had nothing in life, you know, in debt, got fired from every job. So I had still done nothing, but I woke up and I started meditating and putting myself in that future. And I was like, that's a possibility for me. And I have no idea how the hell I'm going to make that happen, but that's what I want. And that's all I'm going to focus on. So I would focus on that. And I did get laughed at. Even my mom and dad probably looked at me like, well, he's crazy. How is he going to get from here to like Ferrari and having all these things in his life? But I, I kept learning and learning from these books. And I just sat there and read and watched YouTube videos. I listened to podcasts just like this of other people sharing their stories. Like, you know, David Goggins and all these other guys that completely changed their life. And I kept reading and listening. And eventually I did get to a point where that entire vision board actually came true, except for the car. But I'm getting the car now. So the car happened a little late. But other than the car, everything else on the vision board came true. And I made YouTube videos where I showed the vision board where I had done nothing on there. And now a couple of years later, the whole vision board, it's like I manifested all of it. And I do credit that to me just being able to envision that and have it in my mind. And most people don't do that. They just sit there and keep thinking about, I got kicked out, I got fired, I'm a drug addict. And when you keep doing that day by day, that's where you remain. It's only when you can like envision the better future that you allow yourself to like go there. Yes. A hundred percent. Yes. To that. Oh my gosh. Sal, you are amazing. And I'm so thankful that you came on my show and I'm really glad that, you know, my listeners are able to hear all of this because there's so many things that you nailed that we didn't even talk about. Like we've had, um, suicidal veterans talk on the show before things like that, but your, your thoughts and your input on, especially manifestation too. I've been huge into that this whole year, just focusing on just manifesting some things in my life. And so, you know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, again, if you could just go ahead and share your links one more time, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, the best way is on Instagram. It's at Sal, S-A-L underscore Habibi, H-A-B-I-B, at Sal Habibi. So you can reach out to me on there, um, whether it's for Amazon FBA um, or you know anything else that I can provide value of, I would be happy to talk. Thank you. If you're watching, you see the handle on your screen. If you're listening, then all of the links will be in the show notes. Um, thank you again, Sal. I appreciate you and wish you the very best. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Please head over to pattycatter.com for the latest updates on Patty, her talk show, and what she's up to. You can also find her on Amazon TV and Roku and on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Patty Catter. Until next time.